Welcome to the Political Jungle. I'm your guide, Steve Irwin, and at least once each month, we're going to meet a herd of animals in this jungle. Like today, some of our guests will be of the species that has risen to the top of the food chain, those who have run for political office and in many cases won the most votes. But we will also be meeting the operatives behind the scenes, campaign managers, press secretaries, legislative aides, fundraisers, party officials, pollsters, schedulers, to name a few. And we'll be talking not only to those who are in the hunt now, but those who have been through the game and pursued other paths, either of their own volition or otherwise. This is not your typical Sunday morning survey of the issues. If you're a wonk looking for meaty policy analysis, you may leave a little hungry. Rather, our prey is the person, the animal itself. Who is this individual? Who inspires her? What motivates him? What makes him sweat? What keeps her up at night? Where has she been? And where does he dream about going? So often we go into the voting booth and vote not on the candidate's stands, but on the candidate's character. Who we think she is down deep. Is she a good person? Would we want to be friends with him? Go out for dinner with her? Do they see what we see when they look at the world we live in? The political jungle, we hope, will give you a more intimate sense of these folks. If you're curious about a life in politics, you'll come away with a deeper understanding of the diversity of opportunities and the many trails you can travel to get there. I'm thrilled that our first guest in the political jungle is Councilman Corey O'Connor. Welcome, Corey. Oh, thanks for having me in the jungle. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great. Thanks for being brave enough to come out. Oh, no problem. We're, uh, Corey, you were elected in 2011. You started, yes. entered office in 2012, and uh, you're the youngest member of city council. Uh, you began your career working for Congressman Doyle, where you met your wife, who was an intern there. Yes. Con <laughs> congressional offices are good places to meet meet future wives. That's where we meet everybody. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the, uh, you were uh, named by Politics PA, one of 30 uh, rising stars under 30 in politics in Pennsylvania in 2010 and the Allegheny County Democrat of the Year. That's, uh, and that led to your becoming a member of council. Yes, yes. It was a good start. It was a good background with Congressman Doyle as well. You got to see how the office runs, and I think that really helps. Among other things that helped you get there. <laughs> among, right. among other things, yes. Uh, now you, you chair uh, Urban Recreation, and which makes a lot of sense because you've had quite a lot of experience in urban recreation in your uh, life. Yeah. Growing up in the field, it's been great. So, and uh, at Central, you were uh, you went to Central Catholic High School, and uh, you were you played golf there. Yes, okay. I was on the team for all four years, and now I'm still the golf coach there. Still the golf coach. Still the golf coach. And, and what I understand, you were the youngest coach in Whippeal history. Yeah, when I was hired, I was actually 20. So I was the youngest varsity coach at the time to be hired. And it was funny, we took the team on a trip, and I wasn't allowed to rent a car because I was too young at the time. <laughs> so uh, it was really a great experience, and the kids were close to our age. So some of them were actually at my wedding, which was pretty neat to have some of the kids you coached at the wedding. That's very nice. Yeah. But now, you as did you aspire to become a golfer when you grew up? I actually, I, I mean, I always played baseball. I played on a number of city league championships. I played shortstop, second base, and I was the leadoff hitter for 14th Ward and Squirrel Hill and Greenfield. And then um, when I started picking up golf, I was about 10 years old. Uh, they started me right-handed, and I couldn't do it, so I went to left because I'm naturally left-handed. Huh. And, um, you know, from there, my dad started picking up the game, and 
you know, one thing led to another. We were to Shenley Park every chance we could get. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's a great story. Uh, you went on to Duquesne University and you studied education? Yes. So were you planning on becoming a teacher at that point? I was. I, 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 I had both. <laughs> I actually had a degree in elementary ed. Um, I was really involved with kids growing up, whether it was coaching, Little League, or golf. And uh, I really wanted to inspire young children, and especially in our region, I thought it was necessary for a good young teacher to be out there and helping kids. Um, and I was going down that path, and then um, when my dad passed away, everything sort of changed. And, um, you know, we just, I decided to take a different kind of shift in helping people in the region. I think it was, it was not just helping kids in the classroom, but then after my dad passed away, the outpouring mm -hmm. from the residents of Pittsburgh, you just wanted to give back and help them as best we could. And you've done that in a lot of ways, not only through uh, your service on council, but you're on a number of uh, boards and authorities, including the stadium authority, which makes sense in your athletic interests. Yes. The Children's Home in Pittsburgh, which is right there in Squirrel Hill, which is that part of your district. Actually, yeah. it's... Uh, it's, it's the one on Penn Avenue. Okay. Um, and then um, I recently, I just came from a new board that I was appointed to, was Alcasan. Okay. So that is a big endeavor, especially into the future when we're talking about green infrastructure and jobs that we can create from green infrastructure here mm -hmm. well on into the next 40, 50 years. So I asked you, Corey, to bring something from your office that will tell a little bit about you, yes. a little bit of show and tell. What did you bring for us Yes, today? I brought a very interesting picture. It was, um, it's my dad on the right, uh, Michael Jordan in the middle, and then me to the way left. Um, obviously, my dad, I have a number of pictures of him in the office, but this is always a great story that I tell. When people come to the office, they always see Michael Jordan first. <laughs> they, they clearly can't <laughs> see us because we're so much shorter than he was. But um, what happened was it was the Mary Lemieux Invitational. Uh, my dad was invited to play, and somebody backed out. So they said, "Would you? does your son want to play? And I said, oh, yeah, definitely. And we went there, and the times we thought we were teeing off at 1130, and it was... I think it was like Raleigh Fingers or something. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that's nice, whatever. And then there was a shift. So we got to the first tee, and they introduced Michael Jordan. And we're all standing there, and then a throng of 300 people come running over the hillside. So now if you weren't nervous before, you were yeah. really nervous at that point. And Jordan smoking a big cigar. Um, he was really nice to everybody. And he's supposed to hit last. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael didn't follow the rules. And he got up there and just rips a ball right down the middle of wow. the fairway. Uh, my dad looks at me and says, well, you better go next. I said, okay. So I get up, and I was still pretty good at that point because I could play a lot of golf in high school. I hit it right down the middle. My dad, who wasn't a very good golfer, he's a bogey golfer, hit it down the middle. So nice. now it was up to our last player, and he hit a big golfer's term, a shank, into the crowd, and it bounced, and it hit a couple people, and I just... Felt really bad for the guy, but <laughs> it was something unique that, you know, the following year my dad ran into Michael at the same event, mm -hmm. and he was sort of just chit-chatting with him. And I think that was the best part of that whole story was, you know, my dad was representing the city mm -hmm. and got to meet an international player, and he was still talking about Pittsburgh when he came back. And that's why I sort of keep this around to tell that story. And that's I, nice. I did beat him on the front nine. We was, got we got rained out on the back, but I beat okay. him on the front nine. So. Uh, and w which course is this? This Mr. was at Nevillewood. In Nevillewood. Nevillewood. And do you remember what you shot? I had 37. He had 38. What was your uh, handicap when you were at your best? Uh, I was scratched. Now, and now you're on now with council, work. Are you? Yeah, it's probably like a five or a six. It's getting up there. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you. Um, what did you learn from golf? Uh, any lessons along the way that uh, that you've carried with you? Oh, I think in your you know, city council career. Yeah, I mean, golf is a game, and it's great. I'm on the first tee board, and they really teach kids about life lessons, not just on the golf course, but outside of the golf course. Mm -hmm. And you know, golf's a great sport because you're not always gonna hit the best shot. And you're gonna be stuck in a certain area you don't wanna be in, but it's the mental approach that you have to get your way out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why golf is such a great, you know, catalyst into what life is actually all about. And that's why it's a good sport. And the mental ability of a golfer, I think, is up there with any other sport you can see. Okay, Corey, we're entering the deep dive section of the show. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about what inspires you, what makes you sweat, 
what makes you, makes you uh, get up in the morning and, and where you want to go with all this. Um, first, let's talk about a little bit of inspiration. Obviously, your dad was a big inspiration for you. Uh, talk just a little bit about that, but also talk about other people in your life that have uh, influenced you and inspire you each day. Yeah, I mean, he really inspired me just because of how he would react to people. And I think, you know, when you're in this business, it's a people-friendly business. And he always did when he was working with Roy Rogers. Um, it was always the customer's always right. So I almost wear that hat and the constituent is right and we're running a business in the city. And you got to put people first when you're serving especially a huge constituency like yeah. the city of Pittsburgh. So that really inspired me to be a down-to-earth people person. You know, I don't like sitting behind the desk all the time. I like to be out walking the streets because you learn more by doing that than mm -hmm. sitting behind a desk, you know, meeting after meeting, call after call. You got to get out there. So that's really inspirational. Um, obviously, I got some leadership from Congressman Doyle when I worked there. Yeah. And just to see how he visualized not just the city as a local level, but as a national level. So I think you have to look at both inspirations as, you know, yes, we're a small por portion of the nation, but mm -hmm. how do we inspire everybody else? Your dad and talked you know, a lot about uh, Lou Pappen and, oh, yeah. and uh, how and you're going to like it. That yeah. you're going you're gonna to like it. Yeah. And uh, made uh, uh, he had a big influence on his his life. Did did you know Lou? I knew Lou for years. Did yeah, you? it was always great um, going to different events with Lou. Um, he always, you know, had a smile on your face and he would tell everybody to come to Roy Rogers. He always had a coupon on him to get somebody to come to the restaurant, which mm -hmm. was great. And then all of his kids and grandkids as well. I always remember going to the Pappins around Christmas. We always, my dad would either take us to lunch with Lou or we'd mm -hmm. meet him somewhere for dinner. And just to hear them talk about the old restaurant stories. Because, you know, right now the city, we're really booming with restaurants, and everybody knows the restaurant business is probably one of the hardest to do. Sure. So to see it on that level from somebody that came over from Greece, really started with one or two chains, and then really built it up, and now, you know, their family's in real estate today. Right. So it's just amazing how somebody that has a passion for it can drive as far as Lou got. But you, you didn't go into the, uh, the into the restaurant business. You know, my, my dad was a, was a butcher, and, and I'm a lawyer now at yeah. Leach Tishman, and some people say I did go into the family <laughs> you business. You did go into but the But how about you? Yeah. You, you uh, didn't go that direction. No, I, what, what would happen, my sister actually managed a number of the Roy Rogers, and they had a restaurant in Oakland. I was too young to work until they got rid of the Roy Rogers chain, but what I would do is every Saturday morning, my dad had to go and check all the books. Mm -hmm. So I would go with him to all the Roy Rogers in Western PA. And it was great because you got to see how the day-to-day -day operations went. And then when my sister was managing it, you know, my mom would work there. I would go in from time to time. They let me, you know, deep fry things. And, you know, I, I know how to make the chicken recipe. So, you know, it's still secret. So we can't announce that for Roy Rogers' sake. But, um, you so know, when we, you're on undercover when boss. When I'm on undercover boss, <laughs> I, I can... <laughs> Show everybody how to make the Roy Rogers Excellent. recipe. Good. good. But I mean, it was just to see how hardworking it was growing up in that field to really get an understanding of the difficulty of running a restaurant. Did you have any coaches or anything? Obviously, you became a coach. Was there any one coach in particular who really? Yeah, I had a couple of them. Uh, my first Little League coach was Mike Samuels and Paul Boaz, who's an attorney. Uh -huh. um, he was really great because he always had a loose side to him. Mm -hmm. Paul, if anybody knows him, was just a really fun guy to play for. And then uh, my coach at Central in golf every year was, you know, strict, but he always got things accomplished. And I think, you know, when we moved over to coach at Central, we basically took his blueprint, and it's really helped us to succeed. I mean, we've been to the Whitfield Finals a number of years. We won one one time, but he really had five core values that we lived off of. And my friends now who played for him, all have it posted in their office. Okay, so, you got to tell us what are they? If I can remember, pride, desire, teamwork, attention to detail, and follow through. Do you use those uh, in your office, your council office, and you know now you have people that you manage in your office? Yeah, I, it's the same thing. I mean, you have to have pride in where you work. You know, follow through, make sure you worked with the constituents, and obviously a desire to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know attention to detail was huge in our office. You know, you can't just let one day slip by where if a constituent calls, 
we get to that constituent three days la later. Every day at the end of the day, I get an email with here are my five callbacks or 10 callbacks, whatever it is, and you gotta make sure you make those calls as soon as you possibly can. So is that is that what keeps you up at night, and making sure that you get to all your constituents? Yeah, there are, there are some rough nights, you know, obviously when it snows and we have issues like that, that's bad. Um, you know, when it's trying to help somebody, whether it's purchase a property next to their house, well, did we get it done? Why isn't it done fast enough? Mm -hmm. And, you know, even when you walk up and down the street and somebody has a concern or a complaint, you know, you try, that keeps you up at night. And especially, so I don't want to say the negative complaints, but when somebody says, hey, this was supposed to be done months ago, why isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then the whole night you're up thinking, well, why didn't we do that? Why didn't we do this? And obviously there's some legislation that, you know, we battle out on city council sure. and that stuff really keeps you up at night because you want the best product for the residents. Mm -hmm. So you know one day you're going to pass a bill that's going to help you know, 75%, but what happens with those 25% right. that aren't going to get that benefit? So council is a big part of your life, obviously, but uh, what are your distractions? What are the things that you like to do when you're not doing your job? Well, I mean, I, in the summer, I try to sneak out and golf when I can. Um, my wife keeps me busy around the house now. She, uh, so we just moved a couple years, about a year ago or so. And, uh, you, you know, live in Swissvale? Swiss, Swiss Sound Park. Park. Swiss Sound Park. Uh, married life is great. We have a dog. Uh, she just got a fish, so that'll be The dog got a fish? No, no. <laughs> My <laughs> wife got a fish. What's the dog's name? What's the fish's name? Uh, the fish? I actually don't even know what the fish's okay. name. That's my wife's okay. genre. I don't, the first fish we had lasted about five hours, so that wasn't a, <laughs> a good fish to get. Uh, the dog's name's Tippy. Okay. It's a chihuahua wiener dog with one blue eye, one brown eye. Uh -huh. And I bought it for my wife when we were dating. She was at Penn State, and it was uh, her graduation present. So I got it for her. She actually kept it in her dorm at Penn State. Not that, I don't know if she was allowed to, but the dog survived uh, Penn State, mm -hmm. and now, you know, we're at home with it now, and everything's Beautiful. going pretty well. I'm trying to think, you know, she, she takes me to the gym every once in a while, so that distracts me. Uh, reality TV is watched often at our house, okay. which is awful to watch. What's your favorite reality TV show um, other than Undercover th Boss? They're, they're all pretty brutal to watch. Uh, <laughs> um, I actually, uh, sitcoms, I like The Goldbergs. Have okay. you seen that on ABC? So it I'm actually reminds kind of me. You're, you're, that's, the, that's right. Modern mm -hmm. Family's right before it. So uh, The Goldbergs we really like because uh, the star of it is from Curb Your Enthusiasm with Larry David. Sure. And uh, his name's Jeff Garland. Mm -hmm. And then my wife I told her it was like growing up in the 80s because I was born in 84. So I remember all the music that's played in the show. Right. And then going to my, on the, my mom's side is all Jewish. So I remember some of the stories that, you know, are displayed on the show yeah. happened at my grandmother's house on my mom's side. So it's, it's a fun show that sort of gets you away from reality for a little bit. It's great. Well, let's talk about just reality just yeah. for a second, but not even reality, but dreams. Uh, what is your dream? I mean, today, if you look forward now, you're 29 years old, 30, almost 30, you're 30 old, years old. old yeah. um, time goes fast. 25 years from now, you want to look back. What do you want to be able to say that you uh, did in uh, your public life? I want to be able to say that, you know, I served the residents of Pittsburgh to the, obviously the best of my ability, but also brought new innovation to the city. Um, you know, when you look at Squirrel Hill, especially the business district, I want to say I helped solve the problem where Pull Eyes was. I want to say, I looked at that real estate and we were able to bring developers there. And Pull Eyes used to be there, but when I was in office, this is what we did and that's what's there now. When you look at Greenfield, you know, continuing to grow the young base there. Lincoln Place providing more and more services. You know, they want some new things at their park. So that would be something to look back on. And then obviously Hazelwood, when you look at the Almano site, was an old brownfield. Sure. And you know, I want to look back you know, in 25 years and say, before I got into council, nothing was done. Right now, we have roads, we have jobs being constructed there, we have major corporations that are locating there, and without us on city council working together to get that, you would still be seeing a brownfield site. Are you going to move there? If, if time comes <laughs> available, yeah, I think it would be a great site because you're right on the river. Yeah. It's five to ten minutes from everywhere in the city of Pittsburgh, yeah. and more and more younger people are moving here, taking you know, old houses that we have in Hayeswood, which are very unique because some of them have four or five bedrooms mm -hmm. and they're starting to revamp them. Right. So now you do it not just here, but in Lawrenceville as well, you're seeing more and more young people coming back, revamping the old houses that we have and starting to live there. So if uh, 
worst comes to worst and you don't have the opportunity to continue because you have to get elected to do this kind of thing. Right. Um, and uh, you have to choose another path. What, what, if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? I think I would be helping the public in some way, um, whether it goes back to teaching and helping young educators in the city of Pittsburgh so that you know, we ensure that the next generation of Pittsburgher lives here and are qualified to do good jobs in the city. So that would be one. Um, you know, there's also other public sector jobs that you can do helping people. And, and that's really our passion. I mean, everybody in the family, whether it's my brother who's a priest who, who helps people day to day on whether it's a confession or not, mm -hmm. um, my sister who, you know, has worked for a number of years just at various jobs in the community, actually just started at uh, Color Me Mind up the street. So, right. you know, things like that. And my mom works at the Caring Center downtown. So it's always helping people. And, so I feel like if I wasn't on council, I'd still be out there doing something like that. I was that. an attorney for the um, family that built kind of color me mine. Oh, there you go. And yeah, I have that's a little a a tile with uh, the I'll original have to go in and, and check it out. There. Yeah. Yeah. So Corey, I was a Senate staffer in Washington, D.C., and I knew that I had to prepare my boss every time with talking points, and these are the things that no matter what, every media consultant will tell you the answer to the questions are the points that you want to make. If I haven't asked you the question that's given you that opportunity yet, what do you want to come away from this show with people knowing about you? That, you know, I'm a hard worker, love the city of Pittsburgh, have a passion for it. Um, I give an open-minded conversation to anybody. Um, I think you have to be open-minded when you get down to city council, and you have to be independent. And I've done that for my four years, open-minded, independent, and cooperative. I think you can ask any council member, you know, when we put a bill out there, we always end up with eight or nine votes. So I think it's collaborative as well. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, really how you push a city forward. Forget the background noise, but just get to the heart of it. And at the end of the day, I always feel whatever the issue is, whether it's simple or whether it's, you know, very polarizing to the population, you're going to end up with an, a an answer, especially for me. You've got to get in a room and get the job done. And that's, you know, what we always try to get out, that we are an office and myself, we can get people in a room and solve the problem. Now, is there anything else that points that you want to make? Because next time you're going to be sitting on the defensive. So it's your last chance to say what you want, because I control the agenda. Oh, uh, you control the agenda? No, I, I think I'm pretty good. That's, you okay. know, that, that's it. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, yeah. get ready for rapid response. Rapid response. I'm ready. Corey, it's time for rapid response. Okay. Uh, you know that uh, one of the most effective political uh, tools that were developed over the last 30 years is because the speed of communications is so fast that as soon as you see something that may require a response that you have to respond and you respond and you have to respond rapidly. So here's how it goes. Uh, I will say to you something like Snapchat or Instagram. Okay. And you pick one. All right. All right. Sounds good. Try it. With Snapchat? Yeah. Uh, Instagram. Okay. Uh, Twitter or Facebook? Twitter, because my Facebook account doesn't work right now. <laughs> so Instagram or Twitter? Twitter. Okay. Now, Perfect. You got it. I got it. Now, okay. it's going to be a little bit like Jeopardy. There's a couple of categories, and we're going to touch on a couple of things we've talked about. Okay. But this is going to be a little bit more difficult. All, All right. right. Here we go. For food. Ready? Yep. Minios or Aiello's? Aiello's. McCormick and Schmicks or Polize? <laughs> well, obviously McCormick <laughs> and Schmicks. <laughs> Your favorite pierogi? Uh, potato. Well, I... Is it cheese chestnut? Oh, is sorry, oh, wrong onion? one, wrong <laughs> one. Uh, I will go Potent with uh, cheese chester. Cheese chester. Okay, moving on to people, places, and things. Okay. The Dark Knight Rises or Night of the Living Dead? Dark Knight Rises. Waterfront or Waterworks? Waterfront. Walnut or Forbes and Murray? Forbes and Murray. Bradenton or South Beach? Ooh, South Beach. Ooh. Alderdice or Central Catholic? No, Central Catholic. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. Uh, okay, let's do a little bit of politics. Okay. All right. And you can't walk out. Okay, I'm right. here. Uber or Lyft? Uber. Uber or Yellow Cab? Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> yellow, I'll go with Yellow Cab. Yellow Cab or Pedicab? <laughs> uh, yellow Cab. And Pedicab or the T? The T. All right, next, UPMC or Highmark 
or MedExpress? Oh, wow. Um, my mom works for Highmark. Um, I'll go with MedExpress. We'll get rid of the big guys. This guy's been in the politics business <laughs> for a while. All right, PG or the Trib? Oh, uh, PG. Now, the Trib endorsed you also. I know. They both <laughs> did. They put me on a tough spot. You want spot. to change your answer? I think there's more readers in the city. Too late. You PG. got it. Yeah, I got, yeah. All right. Chronicle or Courier? Uh, Chronicle. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> go. Cultural institutions in Pittsburgh. Okay. Mac Miller or Wiz Khalifa? I coached Mac Miller. Wiz Khalifa was in my neighborhood. Uh, I'll go with Mac. Okay. Uh, we've got Little League now. 14th Ward or Squirrel Hill Baseball? Oh. Uh, I played 14th Ward, and I coached in Squirrel Hill. Yeah. Um, geez, that's a tough one. Uh, I'll go with Squirrel Hill. Okay. Casinos, Rivers or Meadows? Uh, rivers. Kennywood or Sandcastle? I don't ride roller coasters, but I'll, I'll go with Kennywood. They have potato patch fries, so I'll go there. Okay, well, this might be a hard one since you don't ride roller okay. coasters. But <laughs> I can. I mean, I've been on them. So. Thunderbolt or the Jackrabbit? Jackrabbit. Excellent. An aquarium or aviary? Aquarium. All right, finally, the last topic, one that you, politics and religion are tough ones. Here's okay. the religion. Religion. The passion or the wild things? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'll go with the passion. All right. Nine candles or ornamental conifer? Nine candles. Pope Francis? Or Father Terry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I got to go with Father Terry. Yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, Oakmont or Shenley? Shenley. There you All go. the way. I, I always tell people it's harder to hit over moving traffic and people walking than to hit over any bunker at Oakmont. Well, it helps that Shenley's named for your dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was an easy one. Yeah. All right, great responses. Thanks for well, playing. No, thank you. Response. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Good. How did I get to be your host? Well, if you think the crocodile hunter himself has come back to lead you through a different kind of jungle, you're misguided. This Steve Irwin is the offspring of two kids who met at a young Dems dance in the 50s. At age seven, I was canvassing door to door for candidates. I've worked for D's who became R's and R's who morphed into D's. I've raised money, served as legal counsel, spoken as a surrogate for folks running for everything from district justice to president of the United States. I've worked for mayors, governors, senators, attorneys general, and one extraordinary federal judge. With nearly 50 years of political experience, I've become intimate with countless folks in this business of all stripes, and I'm excited to scope them out with you. So come on and safari with me next time in the political jungle.